Our programme yesterday about the possibility of a badger cull going ahead prompted many comments from you. The report by the government's chief scientific adviser, Sir David King, recommended that killing a significant number of badgers in areas where bovine tuberculosis is rife would help stop the progress of the disease. Last July, the government's independent scientific group assessed 10 years of research and recommended a badger cull would not help stop the disease. Well, Ian titman reed from Berkshire emailed us to say this. This new report is clearly fixed to give the political result that the government want to appease the farmers after the foot and mouth scandal. It was only the other week that we were being told that dairy farming was bad for the environment and we should all be drinking UHT milk. Yet this week we're quite happy to slaughter the UK badger population to help the dairy farmers. I'll be writing to my MP to protest about this and will not be supporting local farmers. I'm not a member of any animal rights organisation, but I will certainly join my local badger group now. We also had an email from Alice Garlick, who lives in Powys. I called her back to hear why she takes a different view. I think we should cull. I think the latest report really makes that fairly clear. I don't think you can be sentimental about it. It's proven that badgers have TB and that they do infect cattle with TB. And it costs the taxpayers a lot of money every year, the fact that the cattle get TB. And therefore, I think something has to be done to try and solve this and resolve it. And Nick Porter sent an email to say he had changed his mind about supporting farmers. I was sympathetic to the farmers' problems until I heard the plan for the proposed badger cull was being promoted again. I shall buy as little British farm produce as possible, especially dairy, until I hear the coal will not go ahead. And if you would like to send us an email, you can do it via our website. That's bbc.co.uk forward slash farming today. If a cull does go ahead, how could it work? Farms have said they're willing to help, but only under close supervision by vets. A badger culling used to happen in the 1970s before the badger was protected. Andrew Biggs is Senior Vice President for the British Cattle Veterinary Association. Clearly, if any culling of any animal is going to take place, it has to be A, efficient, and B, humane. I don't think it's uh, acceptable to have any other, other method than that. In the past, gassing was the, the method of choice, although the product that was used, uh, a cyanide paste that's then released the gas, was uh, thought not to be humane, and in fact it was stopped. But in the meantime, there's a lot of research has been taking place, and the gas delivery is probably going to be uh, the most effective way, and currently carbon monoxide appears to be the most likely gas. The big concerns that are going on, and I guess quite rightly so, are that some of these sets are absolutely ginormous, they're huge, and of course many of them contain blind-ending tunnels, and there's some concerns as to how well the gas actually permeates to the end of these tunnels. And until everybody's happy with the delivery and the welfare and the efficiency of it, then clearly it's not going to be, if you like, a licensed form uh, of culling for badgers. Now, when we had the Krebs trial, badgers were caught and culled yeah. within that trial. Now, how were they caught? And these were in cages, I believe, That's weren't they? That's right. That was uh, a method that was acceptable, uh, and, uh, and gassing clearly wasn't. But uh, it was estimated that it could be as much as six to seven hundred pounds cost for each badger that was trapped. It sounds prohibitively expensive. Absolutely, and I think that that really isn't one method that would be acceptable. The other two methods that are available would be a, a body snare, or sometimes called a stop snare. It actually has a, a bead on the snare such that it catches the animal around the body. Again, there's an awful lot of research been done by DEFRA. There are different ways of setting these body traps. But again, these traits are very labour-intensive. These snares, body snares, will have to be uh, monitored very regularly such that the animals are then actually dispatched once they're caught in the body snare. So the body snare is a restraint and not a, a method of culling. Will vets be carrying out this cull? Absolutely not. No, this wouldn't be something that vets would be involved in. Who will actually do it then? gamekeepers and the like and it would be possible for farmers themselves to become trained to to actually take part in and uh, culling on their own land in your view can this actually work yes i think it can this isn't something that you you know you do once and then go away this is going to be something for those who want to read the report it certainly points out quite clearly that it will need to be sustained
And so if we are going to embark on this, it needs to be done in a, in a professional and an efficient and sustained way. Andrew Biggs from the British Cattle Veterinary Association. A possible cull of badgers was discussed in some depth yesterday when the Secretary of State at DEFRA, Hilary Benn, faced the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Committee of MPs for the first time. During questioning, Mr Benn said he would now meet Professor John Bourne, who had led the independent scientific group on bovine TB, which recommended no cull of badgers. It was a decision which EFRA committee chairman Michael Jack told me he welcomed. Well, in fairness to the Secretary of State, I think he'd already made his mind up that he ought, if nothing else, out of courtesy, but certainly in a quest for more knowledge on a subject which he recognises that he's still learning about, have to talk to John Bourne about the Independent Scientific Group's final report. I was delighted that that was going to take place, bearing in mind that later today we'll have the opportunity ourselves of comparing the Bourne view with that of the government's chief scientist, Sir David King. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how we end up on who has the last word on the science on the subject of dealing with bovine TB. And both those men will be appearing before you later today. What sort of questions will you be asking? Well, we certainly want to give John Bourne the opportunity to rebut some of the comments which the National Farmers Union made uh, about his report. Clearly, they believe that a cull is possible and indeed practical. John Bourne disagrees, except under the circumstances of a very large-scale cull. Equally, we'll be wanting to probe how it was that David King, using the same scientific evidence, because effectively he's added a a further peer group review dimension to this, we'll want to know how he came to his conclusions, and perhaps teasingly also to find out just how much time this so-called panel of experts has actually spent going over the evidence, because there's one little comment in the report that indicates that his... Irish uh, contributor made his contribution for part of the time on the telephone. So it'll be very interesting to see in what depth uh, Sir David King and his group have actually gone into a subject which John Bourne effectively has spent a lifetime looking at. Now, looking at uh, the budget for DEFRA, which was another subject which you probed Hilary Benn on, it seems that the issue of cost sharing on animal disease is something which has been discussed for some time. Was there any revelation as to the time scale for a consultation on this now? Well, it's clear that the Secretary of State hoped that more immediate consultation on burden sharing to deal with animal disease would be concluded in sufficient time to enable his budget to be reduced by 120-odd million pounds. Secretary of State made it very clear to us that the recent animal disease outbreaks had slowed down that process and as a result those savings were not going to be made on the time scale he had envisaged. That means only one thing, there's going to be some pain and suffering somewhere else in the DEFRA budget. We have no idea what that is going to be but we're going to be keeping a very close eye on it indeed. Michael Jack, chairman of the EFRA Select Committee and we'll hear about his questioning of the chief scientific advisor Sir David King and Professor John Bourne about controlling bovine TB in tomorrow's programme. I'm Anna Hill. The producer this morning was Andrew Smith.